what is love? I'm sure that all of you have that question every single day and you question why you're alone. But I mean, I question why I'm alone. You probably don't. My point is today, we're going to be watching this video by Savannah Brown, who asked the same question. What is love? Baby, you're hurting me, which I've never seen. And I hope is a very interesting perspective on what love is, because I don't understand. And maybe we'll all come to understand it together. Hello, it's me. Just a quick update before we get into things. I don't do in video ads for a bunch of reasons, but I'd really, really like to dedicate more time to making videos. Um, so I have a Patreon now. The cheapest tier is pretty cheap. I've been posting little life and craft essays, unreleased work, test work, reading lists, videos. You guys can check out all this stuff in the description down below where I will link the original video as always. And you can cut Savannah's stuff. So please go check it out there. Let's watch this video. Here's the video. I am 27 years old. I know absolutely everything. Hell is for the way you Hello. Welcome to hell. Love. What's going on? Oh, the gilded eyes. Oh, the okay. fucking despair. Meanwhile, in the culture, and I am not a culture critic, I am but a weak baby orca swept to shore by culture's wave, we are looks maxing. <laughs> Marriages aren't hugely successful at the moment. Dude, that's literally a thing that I learned about recently. People are looks maxing these days to try to figure out like how they would look best. I mean, I, to be fair, I look smacks recently and I plan on actually going through that at some point. But yeah, I, I just, I don't understand if society even understands what love is anymore. Like I, I feel like a lot of people claim that they know what love is, but they they just don't, right? And I think that as a society, we need to, we need to like reel it back a little bit because I think everyone's perception of what it is is wrong at this point. I Included. The legal commitment we now make for love, but used to make for sheep. People are trying to understand a relationship's mechanisms or maybe just armor themselves. There's critical analysis, TikTok, biological essentialism, love languages and attachment styles, DIY, pop psychology, hyperspeed paths to romantic revelation without any nuance or the kind of painful self-reflection that actually leads to revelation. You can't hide from the infinite varying degrees of the human experience behind your little phrases forever. This interminable list of red flags, all these icks, men wearing pajamas or whatever. Not mine, to be clear. I like when people are comfortable. Maybe this- I saw that on TikTok where people were like, oh, the icks of men. And one of them was literally just men wearing pajamas. And I didn't understand what is wrong with men wearing pajamas. Like it doesn't make sense to me that there are some women out there who hate men that wear pajamas, right? Like what is up with that? It speaks to identity <laughs> formation, seeing a partner as an extension of ourselves, what we desire being who we are. I think that's telling about how important this is to a lot of us. I also think the internet's obsession with this stuff is just another manifestation of the, the folly of any attempted reality organization. It's a scary topic, love. It makes you think about stuff like loneliness and, and sex and legacy and death and presents the- I feel like all the videos on the channel in the past few days have talked about all of these topics and I'm now trying to understand whether or not I feel lonely. Have I been making videos reacting to what love and loneliness is because I'm feeling these effects myself or am I just doing this because it's an entertaining thing that people like watching and hearing my opinion on? Not really sure how I feel anymore. Also really like her style of videos, by the way. The more likely than you'd hoped possibility that you will be hurt so severely by someone who deigned to care about you that it will change how you live forever. So it's good to put this stuff in a box so it feels like you got it under control. It doesn't bite you. Also, media. <laughs> it's debated to what extent our vision for True. our relationships is programmed biologically or culturally. To meta Evan, Either you're right. Way, I think it's fair to say in our times, a lot of people grow up assuming this is the path their lives will take. They'll meet someone when they're young with whom they'll coexist in dizzy, wedded bliss until one of them is dead. If you're not able I don't think that's actually true, to be fair, right? Because a lot of people think that they'll probably meet someone young, but the reality of life is that only very few lucky people do that. I think the the common thing that happens these days is that you actually, you know, I take it back. Maybe maybe you do. Maybe you do meet someone when you're young, but half the time what ends up happening is that you don't understand your feelings uh, for each other and then you just go separate ways. And then you see people come back years later and they're like, why did we never, why did we never try? Why did we never figure this out together, right? Like, I feel like for me, the, the relationships that I've noticed with a lot of people is that that's just what seems to happen is they they will they will find someone in their youth they'll be chill with them and then years later they come back and they're like yeah everything else didn't work out why did we never try it with us and they finally try or sometimes they don't because it's just way too late because they're like 40 now um not saying 40 is too old but like it's just what happens and then yeah you like it, I don't know it sounds like a modern day 
romance, but it, that's what it is. But I, I meant like a modern day romantic film where you'll see that happen a lot, where people will consistently just miss the opportunity to be with each other because they try dating other people when they should have just dated themselves. Does that make sense? Am I silly? People to engage with this part of life. There's something wrong. There's an urgency. Your parents are worried. But accomplishing this, as it turns out, is not that easy. Not only must you navigate the battleground of courtship, wherein people take secret videos of your first dates to mock you online. Stop doing is that a thing that happens that is just so wrong first of all i wouldn't take a secret video for first date i would actually stream the first date i'm just that weird of a guy to be fair i feel like anyone who like ends up with me in the future needs to like fully understand and commit to the idea that i will irl stream our dates i've said this before though like i that is probably one of my biggest red flags as to why i might be single but like if she's not okay with vlogging and or filming um dates at, at random intervals she's probably not the one you know that you're dealing with your own fears and insecurities and wounds and the intersection of these with other people's fears and insecurities and wounds and a deep unease at the thought of aloneness and somehow while in the grips of this unease you're supposed to make a lucid educated decision about the kind of partner you should want which you have no possible way of knowing until after you've failed in this pursuit normally over and over and miserably but before all that here you are face to face with someone attractive who has the appropriate amount i love her videos she's just a talking head but like just it, it's beautiful like it, everything is just filmed so beautifully i need to start changing how i film things i think i'm gonna have an entire overhaul of my setup and i think we're gonna we're, we're gonna change some stuff i want my videos to look like hers out of social currency and smells like your mom it's perfect go on kiss this is assuming she's one of your like favorite you youtubers for if years don't here's my advice okay. out out now unless you're making art or you're punishing yourself for a sin but it's nice when it works reality is distorted through this new kaleidoscope of meaning otherwise respectable people become poets personally i've been known to write down every conversation i have with this person which i remember somehow this is the so-called good part of love but hey i don't even think that's love that's an explosive to be fair cocktail of desire and infatuation and the initial spark of attachment that makes you want to lick them and take them to breakfast but eventually what have you ever wanted to lick someone and take them to breakfast because if that's how what love is I, I like i have been doing it wrong for so long bro like i maybe maybe i need to try to lick someone and take them to breakfast like m maybe ultimately that should be my end goal in life whatever that is wears off and you encounter the real face of your entanglement which up till now had been intense but largely uncomplicated you know when you were a kid and you visited a friend from school and you went to their house and you smelled it and you met their parents and sat at their kitchen table and you were like this isn't right that's how i felt about the internal worlds of everyone i've ever dated and of course they were thinking the same that's true actually that's actually a very interesting way of describing it but that is just like sometimes you just know right like 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 you'll you'll know deep down inside that someone is bad for you but like you give it a chance you're like whatever we'll see if this works and then sometimes you meet people and you're like this is it this works and then like you're just too scared to give it a chance and like i, I think we've all been there i think we've all been there like i'm never i'm not gonna be the type of person that says like there's always the one person for someone because like i i am a firm believer that as a society and as human beings there are multiple people people out there for all of us and you know you we've probably all reached a point where we've met someone and we've vibed with them so well that you know that if you tried something it could 100 percent work you just haven't done it right uh and, and i think that's what they're describing here where like you know it's the opposite effect of where you know you meet someone and you're like yeah this is definitely not gonna work but you still do it anyway right the analogy of going to someone's house and knowing that it feels wrong is like going on a date and you could already tell that there's just not gonna vibe you still continue anyway Same about me what is this place how do you live in here they don't understand and god knows there's parts of it you don't even want them to see the basement is padlocked or full of concrete eventually you might let them peek into the basement but them not knowing how important it is to you or even that that's the basement will say something like ew or what the fuck they're clumsy with your emotions in a way that in some moments feels unforgivable relationships uncover sore spots you didn't even know you had and it'll dawn on you at some point that this complete intimate self you want to share with them is just one big sore spot or one very fragile child 
riddled with insecurities, deep-seated Freudian stuff. And this whole time you're doing the exact... She's very well-spoken, but she is dropping nothing but bangers right now. It is true. It, it is scary to open up yourself to someone and for you to admit the faults about yourself to another human being. Which is why, like I said, if you find someone that you can actively and openly talk to about these sort of things, like, please hold on to that. Like, that, that is someone that you should keep around forever, if possible. Because I don't know if you'll find someone else like that. You, you can... It'll just be very, very difficult in general. Same thing to them, hurting them over and over without intention, just in ignorance, which feels worse somehow. The closer you get to one another, the more capable you are of this absolute annihilation. See the hedgehog's dilemma. And somehow, after all this, you're still sexually repressed. And it doesn't always happen through betrayal or deception. Someone might just quietly fall out of love with you in their own time and you watch their private world recede from view, or maybe you do this to somebody else and you don't understand why. It's a tragedy, any of this happening in the- It's the scariest part about love because yes, as much as you love someone, you can fall out of love with them or they can fall out of love with you. I think, again, we've all probably been there before, or maybe I'm just talking about myself in this instance, but falling in love, I think is the easy part. Falling out of love is, is hard, or sorry, no, falling out of love is hard to live through, I should say. It's definitely easy for some people to fall in love as well, but like, yeah, it becomes very, very rough when you when you have to sit there and, and deal with love falling apart Um, because love is... It, it's a roller coaster. It's never going to be perfect. I think I talked about that in the last video or, or, or one of my previous videos, but it's never going to be perfect. You should never really expect a relationship to be perfect. People are human beings. Like if you don't realize that human beings have faults about them, then how can you actually love them as a person? I think it's important that you understand that the faults in a person are kind of what make them a person. And if you can handle those faults and, and deal with them together, then ultimately you have a better chance than most people, right? Yeah, no one is perfect and we all have our flaws and that's what makes people beautiful face of severe vulnerability it changes people lives are defined by these pains and to avoid any of that happening again because it hurt really bad the next time you adopt a sort of defensive stance you start measuring things maybe subconsciously maybe not keeping a tally logging how much you put in versus what you get back you're empowered so you refuse to be someone's therapist also you've been to therapy and now you can't stop talking like you have weaponizing cold unemotive workplace phrases to speak about the bluest matters of the soul it's criminal meanwhile i am not gonna lie she has a point with that after i went to therapy for the first time dog i was talking to everybody like i was a master and professional therapist dude my friends probably hated me at that fact i was just out here like you know deconstructing every single person like you know and telling them what was wrong with them and how they should probably try to fix that uh i i've definitely done that and with, with some people and and she pushed them away and I, you know thankfully i don't do that anymore but yeah it, it's it's like a band-aid to how hurt you might feel as a person and it's not something that you should do well your perception of each other is fucked you've got the people you both are inside your heads and what you can accurately decode of yourselves then it's your analysis of their selfhood and vice versa plus what you interpret their interpretation of you to be and vice versa oh no in the midst of all this selfhood your internal world it's always changing and the only way they'll know and be able to keep up with it is if you explain it to them Communication is important, who knew? If he wanted to, he would, maybe, or maybe he just doesn't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> you it's hard. I still struggle with this a lot, even in- I will say, like, genuinely speaking, I think communicating with people exactly how you feel about certain things is definitely the best way to go about it. But like, I think as a society, we need to stop trying to read each other's minds and we should focus more on telling each other exactly how we feel. I, as a person, have struggled in the past with not being open and honest about my feelings. But today, and like, I think I, to be fair, started maybe like a week ago, uh, more openly doing this. And I told myself that that was one of my goals for this year, where I wanted to be more upfront and honest about how I feel in every situation, just so I have clear communication the people i'm talking to and, and and what i want and and hopefully they understand because you know if, if i tell them what i want they can either stop me there and you know maybe we'll figure something else out or they can go along with that plan and and that is the agenda right like for instance if, if i want cake right and and i'm hinting at someone that i want cake they might not understand that but if i clearly say hey i want cake and they can be like oh here's the cake or they're like yeah you'll, you'll get cake like later today when we hang out or whatever and then we get cake 
cake and and that works out and that's very very nice like and i'm you know i like that a lot better than just sitting around moseying and 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 just hinting at something like it's very much easier to just be direct with what you want uh it just goes the same thing in like a relationship if you want to date someone or if you want to be with someone it's always better to just be like hey i would like to be with you like i, I want to date you instead of just being like oh i don't know man we'll see we'll see what happens or whatever type thing it's just like make that intention clear and if they are like actually that's not what i want and they shut you down then and there good thing you've realized okay this is where the buck stopped but if they're like actually yeah let's just see right that's i think a clear indicator go ahead see keep exploring those feelings see where it leads you down the line and maybe it starts a, a beautiful relationship i don't know man i think that this should be what a lot more people do when it comes to romance and love but unfortunately it's not what people do when it comes to romance and love and that sucks and it hurts thinking about it as like a, a constant act of renewal and not just like scheduling one conversation it's something that isn't just done over and over again but needs to live at the heart of your connection with each other communication doesn't sit on top of the relationship it is the relationship we're yes. also told about the so-called rarity of love which i posit is bullshit we're in incredibly adaptable animal to the point where i think if we were able to see all of the branching possibilities of our affections we would be shocked um there is no one if that notion has been causing you any pain you're welcome to i am so glad i agree with this woman so much it's kind of crazy i've talked about it before where i've said it that I, I i don't know why it is but like me and women with autism like are on the same page like i agree with them like 99.9 percent .9 of the time like we think similarly and it's crazy because i don't have autism so like when i when i meet a, a woman with autism and like you know we, we share the same values and talk about things and just vibe in general like just it validates me as a human being right uh like I've, I've said before a lot of women i've dated in the past most of them have had autism um a lot of my friends have autism and and you know it's just i think that it's cool we've now reached a point in society where autism is no longer a bad thing and it's a cool thing so yeah get rid of it it's nonsense that being said i'm not trying to say that autism is something that we should fetishize or anything like that because i understand that autism definitely makes a lot of people's lives harder and it's something that some people have to struggle with and i'm just saying that i am glad that i can associate with these people and have a good time around them on a personal note i was in a relationship a couple of years ago where i was acting fucking insane i find it difficult to open up to anyone and the only way i can comfortably do this is through a long and laborious vetting process i don't have many close friendships or indeed any okay. friendships where i disclose often so in that way my relationships did feel rare or at least like they came with a significant sunk cost i discovered about myself that i found it very very important that I meet someone young and that the relationship continue because this would ensure there was someone else alive on the planet with me who had known me at my most intimate at all points in my life besides childhood. Failure in this pursuit seemed to me like losing an important or the most important part of myself forever. It was that is a very interesting way of looking for romance I, I will say if you're looking for someone who has been with you through most of your like issues that could be hard right like i don't know a single person who has been with me through my issues starting from like let's say like 13 right i don't think there's a single person in my life who has been there for me since i was 13. no one not not anyone and i think most people can can attest to that so uh, i'm glad that she grew out of it and now she has realized that right you know that's tough goal that's uh not always going to happen exactly it, it it definitely won't always happen for sure it was unthinkable for my real self the one that exists without condition or pretense or performance to go unobserved or forgotten um it was really scary to me i had felt the relationship i was in was my last chance at that as you can imagine i was acting anxiously i had to let go of this but i didn't know how or even that that was the problem among other things and we broke up um, amicably, but it was sad. After that breakup, I was single for the first time in my conscious life, really since I was like 16. And if I learned anything, it's that the only way to behave respectably in love is to feel as though you don't need it. 
or at least that your selfhood wouldn't be destroyed without its influence i believe that is actually a good way of looking at it as well i think that like when you understand that you as a person can be okay without love then i think that makes you better right and it, it is something that it took me years like again i'm 31 now for me to understand where i genuinely thought that i always needed someone there with me but like i reached a point um you know i think year before last where i started to discover that hey i could be okay on my own and then i think it wasn't until the last relationship i had at the end ish of last year where i broke up with my ex in like august or september um where i realized okay i think it's time that i'm actually alone and i you know learned to live with myself and i did and life has kind of been okay like i've kind of just been coasting by and working and you know having fun and I, like i went to japan and that was that was a really fun time and sure maybe i was talking to someone romantically then but like even then i was still alone right like i was still technically single and it made me discover what I truly wanted out of life and and more importantly what I felt like I deserved out of life and and a relationship right and and it's led me to I will say arguably much better things and much better people I I think that having the moments to sit back and recognize that hey loving yourself is just as important as trying to find love in someone else will just help you improve and it sounds stupid it sounds really dumb to say out loud because you always hear this from people where they're like you have to love yourself or someone else can love you but it's kind of true true is that sincerely it's much easier said than done in my time alone i really 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 thought about and made peace with what my life looked like when it was just me um what mattered in that supposed absence of meaning what was still important when no one was looking i also realized in all my relationships wanting to seem like easy or perfect and not wanting to rock the boat or learn how to communicate. I was hiding so many parts of myself, some that I hadn't even come to terms with yet in me, which is a totally unsustainable way to live. What you want will always catch up with you. If you want to be like a fully realized person, what you want will always catch up with you. I did all that. I became less anxious, more reasonable, a better communicator because serious conversation didn't send like a medical grade shot of adrenaline coursing through my body. Also, I don't feel like I need <laughs> to have one perfect long relationship anymore. I see the value in like closeness that doesn't last. I think any intensity you feel for anyone. And that genuinely is something that I think a lot of my friends don't really understand because I've said on average, a lot of my relationship lasts like maybe four months at best. But like, it, you know, there is value in those relationships. A lot of people might not see it that way, but there, there is like as human beings, you are capable of love. You're capable of finding people. And sure, some people just want to find that one singular person to end up with and be with forever. Hell, I want to find that. I, I want that as well. But like, it doesn't negate the fact that the people that I've been with before were relationships that I enjoyed. They were people that I, you know, might have been in love with. Like those are still very much real and, and they're still very much valid. So like, I think it's important that you recognize you can love and love again. Uh, chat says, I'd say focus on less in relationship and more on just learning to be happy. If being in a relationship helps, then sure, just don't solely depend on relationship for happiness. That is true. That generally is true. And is worthy of your attention and also respect, respect for who you were at that moment this isn't an acquittal of jumping from a relationship at the first sign of trouble the goodness needs to be cultivated even what you want to an extent needs to be cultivated the idea isn't to find someone with who you like lie flush against immediately but someone who wants to like make something with you really every relationship is so that part there is so important dude like finding someone that like you know you're both not perfect but you want to grow together you want to like continue down the path known as life and continue to just help each other be better people and and work on each other consistently and 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 make that future for yourself like when when you find that like i know when when she says like make something with them like you know you might think oh like make content no like I, I'm, ta I'm talking like in a literal sense like you know what do you both want out of life right like do you want to own i don't know a, a tesla someday you both work together to own a tesla together someday or something like that like like what are your goals that you both have that coincide and and you just work today do you guys want a house work towards it do you guys want um i don't know three dogs work to to, to getting that like wh whatever it is that you guys 
guys want do you guys want to travel to every disneyland on the planet do that as long as you guys end up doing it together and you know it's important that a lot of people just like a lot of people just don't really recognize that and maybe it's because i'm a little bit older now maybe it's because i'm 31 years old and now i i, I see the value in finding someone that shares some of those same like wants with me because before i didn't and there was something that my uh ex said to me that i really didn't understand because i thought that you know opposites do attract which do, they do opposites do attract but what she said was evan i don't think we'll work because we're not friends we don't really seem to want the same thing and that really sat with me for a while because I, I i just i at first didn't understand that but over time over the past few months like i said that i have been single i do get it now i think it is important that if you are going to be with someone it's important that you are friends because like a lot of people don't realize if just starting at the basic levels of like boyfriend girlfriend you still have to be that person's friend which is why first dates or dates that you go on everybody that goes on a first date they don't really pan out to them because you don't know the person you're not really friends with that person at the end of the day and it it, it sucks because then there are people out there who are like well i actually shouldn't really be dating your friends and i agree with you you probably shouldn't but those are relationships that are bound to work a little bit better than just the normal ones it, it, it's a really crappy system that just makes you think that you are doing something wrong when in reality society has molded you into thinking that you're doing something wrong when it's just probably the better thing and the right thing to do if that makes any modicum of sense right individual and doesn't sit on like the the petri dish slide of all the relationships that came before it. it's really its own thing each time love happens a new shape is made to hold the the matrix of life you have inside you i really think that like a relationship can't be understood from outside of it do all lovers feel like they're in that's another thing i think that like you can you can look at couples and you can see that they're happy but you'll never understand why they're happy and i think we can all agree to that right like when when you look at like a, a very happy couple you're like yeah they seem very happy but you'll never understand what they're feeling you'll never understand why they they feel so good together and but but you'll understand when you find someone that you really like why you feel good around them and they'll understand why they feel good around you right but people will always be able to tell hey those two are happy like you could just you could just feel like i'm sure that you guys have looked at like other individuals and you're like yeah those two seem very very happy together but like you you don't understand why right and you're like you're just okay with it you're like if they're happy together that's good for them and you just move on with your day um and and you know i i think for me what i had struggled with for a very long time and maybe i still struggle with it now is i i didn't really when i was dating i didn't really look for people who made me happy I just looked for people to pass time, if that makes sense. It's not to say that I, they don't make me happy. They didn't make me happy after the fact or junior relationship. Like I am still friends with most, if not all of my exes. And, you know, we learned after the fact, unfortunately, that maybe we should have tried being friends first. And now I'm friends with all of them. And now we have better understandings of each other. And yeah, we dated. Yeah, we had sex, all that mumbo jumbo. But like now we understand why we didn't work, what we could have done to make it work. And it's just been a, a, a good healing thing for me. Uh, hopefully for them as well and it's just it's changed me as a person for the better and I, I would hope that someday that a lot more people can can find that in themselves and they themselves change and recognize and realize what makes them happy how they can find a friend in their life that makes them happy and if you know i don't know the freaking screw fits or the hat fits whatever the case whatever analogy you want to use you know maybe pursue that relationship instead of blindly going on several first dates or swiping on tinder until you inevitably find nothing and end up just being lonely and sad at the end of the day. Venting something indeed. And I think they probably are. In this spirit, more than anything, it seems like curiosity is the absolute soul of a relationship. We can't learn everything there is to know about ourselves by ourselves and to be known by someone and have that given back to you, I think is like an, an incredible honor. And no, they can't know everything. But even the commitment to learning about someone else, how to handle them, their like innocent dysregulations, their dark stuff, their fears, what you can see in them that they can't see in themselves. That's what this is, I think. It's very difficult to know all of these things about someone else and treat them in any way but gently. You see the child all the time. And no, you're not their therapist, but shouldn't you be sometimes? 
yeah no that is a very important distinction about love too dude i think like you don't really necessarily want to to, to baby your partner but like you you will see the the, the flaws in themselves and you want to you would just want to take care of them and make sure that like nothing on the planet can like hurt them or harm them it's it, it is just a real thing i feel right like that the, at least i've gone through it in, in relationships where you, you you will see the flaws in a person and you're like cool i want to protect i want to protect you from these aspects of yourself or the world and you know i they've done that with me as well where a lot of the people that i've been with have recognized that like i have self-doubt a lot and they've tried to help me uh navigate that and it's just it's just how it works it's i like what she said where she said you will always see the baby in the person it's it's true maybe that's why people have pet names for their partners and they call them baby right <laughs> um but yeah you will you will always just see the baby in the person so a little and their teacher and their carer and them sometimes the same to you all the while acting in service of this curiosity here's love an always changing, uncallied, uncompetitive exchange of power with the ultimate aim being to support one another in recreating the euphoria of childhood. Maybe. Similar to how Bell Hooks talks about love as a commitment to another person's spiritual growth, to act well in love isn't to simply accept the other person as they are, but to coax their selfhood out of them. After coming to this point, I've looked at my behavior in past relationships and felt completely ashamed at my lack of self-knowledge all the times I could have been compassionate but wasn't all the times I could have turned my palms up but didn't it couldn't have been different from what it was but still frustrating in retrospect I don't know if people will like this but I truly feel that if that condition of mutual curiosity is met there are very few things someone could do that are unforgivable and I don't know if I can't have this that's just real I simply don't want it I simply don't want it. That is actually a very important thing to, to understand, right? Like, you know, if, if you can feel all of those things with someone else, like, honestly, go for it, dude. Like, I have witnessed so many friends in the past where they get to that point where it's them and someone else. And you can tell, like, from the outside looking in, like, they really, really, really just genuinely love each other, right? Like, you don't understand what they do and how they communicate, but, like, you can tell. You Like, you, like I think it's really easy to notice, like, when people just love each other right like you we've seen it you watching this video you watching my streams you you can tell when you look at someone and you look at another person when they genuinely just love each other and like it it sucks and it hurts sometimes when you when you also recognize that they're not doing anything to to make that love work uh and and yeah i mean i understand divorce rates are very high but like it's worth try it, it really is worth try because because the wonder and mystery of the human connection, because for some of us, there is simply no choice. We will keep wanting this. How difficult it is to rid yourself of this delusionist's fantasy of lying down next to someone who knows your shame and loves you for it. Your shames also lay together in a field somewhere. For now, you have the whole day. They make you laugh from across the table just for the sound of it. You say, hey, look at that, and they look. Later, you watch a movie one of you loved as a child. It doesn't matter which. Two children going home, your pink room warm, their body the night in sleep, their mind so open it says, okay, I'm going now. I'm going. It's not far. I'll see you tomorrow. That was a beautiful video. That's probably one of the most beautiful videos I've ever watched in my life. And I absolutely understand why people love this channel. So guys, please, everyone watching this, I really want you to go down and subscribe to Savannah Brown. The link to this video will be in the description down below. That was very beautiful. And it made me recognize some things about myself that I didn't really want to admit out loud yet. But I just think that if, if you love yourself and if you understand that loving someone else requires that you love yourself first, you should go out and try to find that love. And I'm not saying that like you should settle for something. I think 
think that what she says is if you if you don't really find someone that you know from the moment you first meet them like if you don't find that person you know that they're not the one why bother right like you want flings sure bother do that but at the end of the day maybe focus more on finding the people that make you feel comfortable from the first moment that you meet them i don't know this video got a lot deeper than i wanted it to be um i didn't think it was going to be that deep but that was that was a beautiful fucking video like genuinely speaking i'm gonna see you guys in the next one take care peace out uh have fun and goodbye